Hello, welcome and an excellent evening. Today we want to talk about expanded memory for MS-DOS. Well, the issue with the original PC was that the 8088 and also its slightly bigger brother, the 8086, had 20 address lines which could address up to 2 to the power of 20 bytes, that is exactly 1 megabyte. The upper 384 kilobytes were used for ROM extensions, video RAM and the BIOS at the top of the memory. There was no way to address more memory using the CPU. That changed with later CPUs, the 8286 and the 8386 enhanced this to 16 megabytes first and then to 4 gigabytes. However, the old PCs were already hitting some of their limitations, basically, by yeah, having only 640k of usable RAM for programs. And that was an issue, and that was an issue that was addressed by certain companies. Most at the forefront was uh, Lotus, who produced the Lotus 123 software, which was basically the Excel of its day, one of the predecessors of Excel, so a uh, spreadsheet that was heavily used. And Intel was also interested in getting more RAM into these legacy systems, and Microsoft as well, because they were also selling a lot of software. So those three companies got together to produce the LIM standard for Lotus, Intel and Microsoft, which defined a standard way to have so-called expanded memory. Expanded memory would normally be on an extra ISA slot card in the original PC and XT, and that card would come with up to multiple megabytes of RAM, that would be bank switched into a certain frame in the upper parts of the memory, an unused segment, usually unused segment between D000 hex and E000 hex. And you could talk to this card via a certain device driver, a standardized API, which was accessible via the interrupt 67. And there would be a lot of different sub functions depending on the standard and to query the size of the an expansion memory card etc etc you could allocate memory free memory stuff like that and also you could take the single so-called pages 16 kilobyte pages of the expand memory and bank switch them into this page frame it's called you would have four different pages and once visible inside of the normal memory and if you wanted to see something else from the expanded memory you would call uh, the function 44 for example map logical page into physical page window and you could select one of the pages that you allocated and have it visible so far so good later versions of ms-dos came with a so-called expanded memory manager emm386 which emulated these hardware cards and allowed legacy software to utilize the expanded memory in basically a software emulation. If you had more than one megabyte on your 386, the EMM386 would use the protected mode and the virtual 8086 mode to simulate access to this hardware uh, via the device driver and map memory from the four gigabyte of address space that the 386 had into this page frame. So why do we want to look at the EMS? Well, because it's the expanded memory that works on all systems down to the very first PC. So you can write MS-DOS software with more than 640 kilobytes of RAM, let's say even a couple of megabytes, um, for example, sound data or graphics data or level data, whatever, to uh, have quicker load times, for example, because switching in uh, bank switch memory is much faster than reloading from disk or even floppy disk, maybe. 
So it's quite interesting to see that and you can still stick with all the known stuff that we have. You don't need to deal with the protected mode, switching back and forth between protected and real mode and stuff like that. Uh, there's also a different standard, the extended memory standard, XMS, which we might take a look in a future episode. But today we want to stick with EMS, good old EMS. And for that we will have a look at um, the different functions that we have here. I have taken the source code from the PC intern book by Databacker or in the US I think it was Abacus and they have a chapter on EMS and XMS and I've taken the source code because you, there's really not that much to it and put it into a, an example program of my own which we'll use to play an animation that doesn't fit in normal memory and couldn't be decoded quickly enough at least not with our very slow GIF decoder that um, we coded a couple of years back. So I have a main loop here uh, that loads all the GIF files into EMS memory and then copies them frame by frame into the VGA memory. And we will fill out all these nice little functions to handle the EMS memory and I'll talk you through that. It's um, no big deal. It's just calling a couple of these interrupt 67 functions. And that's actually it. So let's get right to it. First order of business is to see whether the expanded memory driver is actually installed. And we can do this by checking at a certain memory location if there is a magic string. Um, this is actually also explained in the PC intern book. You basically fetch the segment address of the interrupt handler for interrupt 67 hexadecimal, which is the interrupt for the expanded memory manager. And if it's installed, then there will be a string, a magic string at memory location 10 uh, with this exact thing here with the zero at the end. So yeah, we can definitely check for that. So um, let's do it something like uh, that. Just, uh, we can, I think we can even use something like this. That should be possible. Then we will have to get a couple of register unions. Um, first of all, a reunion of registers and um, some segment registers that we can get as well. Let's call this as Rex. And then we are going to use the interrupt, the DOS interrupt 21 which um, we should have a documentation of here. And there is a function number 35 hexadecimal. And you put into AH, you put 35 hex and then the interrupt vector number and you will get back in ES and BX the pointer to the interrupt handler, which is the basically the API point for the uh, EMM driver. So we say rex h dot AH equals 0x35. This is the function that we're calling. And rex.h.al equals ems int. And I defined that up here, uh, that ems and is 0x67. So you could also write that, of course. And then there's a function called int dos x, which lets you specify input and output registers. Uh, we can look that up in the header files. In dos.h you will have int dos x and there will be input registers, output registers and a bunch of segment registers that are not part of the union regs. The union regs only has the general purpose registers basically in word and byte sizes. Um, obviously the word sizes being ax, bx, cx, dx plus the index registers, uh, the flags uh, the carry flag, I think that might be probably, and the flags. 
and the byte registers will be the high and low parts of the general purpose registers. And the uh, stat uh, segment registers are the, in the structure as regs, obviously. Um, I think that should be it. Yeah, that looks good. And then we just compare with memcomp, creating a far pointer using the make fp macro from the return value as rex es and uh, the address 10 as written here in the documentation at location starting at 10. This gives us the far pointer looking right onto the place where there should be the emm string and we compare with emm name and um, yeah we should use a string length here I think that should hopefully do the trick let's see if this uh, compiles there will probably be a ton of warnings <laughs> because we never use this stuff but um, that should actually already function just fine I hope uh, the M EMS error function I just copied from PC in turn because that's just typing off a lot of error messages. There are different error codes that you can get back, um, illegal handle, etc., etc., etc. More pages requested than physically present, etc. So you can read through that afterwards, but we are not quite that interested in that. However, it's good to know how to get how many pages the expansion board actually has or the emm386 driver provides because that is user configurable and how many are free because there might be some device drivers like smart drive that are already using those pages and where exactly in memory the segment is because um it might not be at d000 but somewhere else if the user configured it as such so there, those are the things that we need to check. Let's go back to the uh, functions here, um, get page count. So this should be our uh, function that we want to implement. And the way this works is always the same. We again need a union of registers. Then we fill up, what was it? Let's have a look, AH with 24 hex. So AH equals 0x42. And then we call the regular interrupt with the input and output registers. And that's it. Um, and then we will compare the error code. So this is our global error code that I defined up here. Um, emmec equals rex.h.ah. And we actually have to silence the warning, so we'll cast this to an integer. And if that is the case, we return EMS error to signal the caller that it should probably quit or at least print out the error. Else we have the um, actual number in BX. And this is exactly what's written here. H equals zero on success. Otherwise we have an error code, uh, which we can translate with the error function above and BX is number of unallocated or available pages. Um, and actually we should return DX, uh, not BX, <laughs> but as you can already see, the BX is exactly what we need for the next function for the free pages. Uh, so we can just copy uh, this whole thing and uh, return BX instead. <laughs> Very simple. And that's why there's not much use in reformulating this because it's always the same thing, basically. Um, that is fine. More interesting, perhaps, is a little bit the next part, the frame segment. But actually, we can we can actually copy this as well uh, let's see reactivate this um, something like this 
So the frame segment, getting the frame segment, um, where does it say? Ah, get page frame base address. So this is function 41 hex, same AH returns the error code and BX has the segment of the page frame. So it's again, copy and paste. A very simple, very straightforward. Allocating pages. Um, let's see. Map logical page, get handle and allocate pages. That is exactly what we want. This is uh, 43. And the idea here is uh, you can do multiple allocations and it will return a handle to that particular allocation. But you can also just go ahead and allocate however much you want to need or use in your program. You can just say, okay, I'm taking. Um, let's say one megabyte or two megabytes in one go and be done with it. And um, since pages are, I think, 16 kilobytes in size, you can do some calculation. 1024 kilobytes in a um, megabyte divided by 16. That would, for example, mean that you require 64 pages if you want to have one megabyte of EMS and try to do that. Of course, you should um, in advance check if there are enough pages available, which I think we don't do in the program below. So we might want to check that. Um, but I think I, I'm checking for errors. So there will be a useful error message for sure. Um, nevertheless, uh, we can again copy this stuff. Uh, now we have function 43, if I remember correctly, and we will get back an EMM handle, which is basically just a number, like the ticket that I mentioned earlier um, for getting your code back, basically, or your allocation, and also to free the allocation. So that's very simple. Um, the mapping, mapping logical pages into physical page window. Here you will give the physical page number. There are four in in the window, as you can see here, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, or zero, one, two, three, to be exact, because it's zero indexed. And then the logical page number from your allocation identified by the handle. So we need to fill up AH, AL, BX, and DX, um, just like that. So, um, function number is 44. And then we have AL with the, oh, this is the allocation. Um, yeah, okay, let's copy that down to the mapping because we were talking about the mapping. was it? What was it before? What was it before? Ah, 43. Okay. So this is looking better. So we have the handle that we got back from the allocation. And we have the physical page number in AL. And then we need the logical page number in BX x.bx is the logical page number and then in dx we put the handle. So ah will return again the success code or the error code um, and which means that we actually don't need any of that but we can shorten this to a boolean that I thought would be fine here. So we basically say mm error code is assigned and if that is zero we will turn true because there was no error so we negate it and otherwise we return um, something not zero which maps to 
boolean true basically which is fine um, so this is um, much simpler um, so we can now free pages allocate pages map pages oh no we can query the free pages we can query the number of pages and of course uh, we also need to return the pages and here something very important is to be noted if you do something like um, malloc and then quit the program the memory will actually be returned upon quitting uh, that is part of what MS-DOS does for you when you quit the program there are ways to allocate memory and not have it returned um, but that's usually not the case whenever you quit a program memory is returned to the operating system MS-DOS in this case with EMS that's not the case because the EMS driver doesn't know when your program quits so you have to always call EMS free to release the memory pages that you allocated or it will not be usable by the next program uh, that is being started and you will have basically a memory leak so you do this with function 45 and it has the same structure as for example the EMS alloc obviously except that it's not um, Oh, we forgot also to put the pages in here. Oh, we'll fix that real quick. But first, let's do this. Uh, release handle and memory pages. Uh, this just takes the handle, obviously. So this is function 45. And uh, we will need in dx, rex, let's turn this off, in dx the handle and then we'll call on the function and the eagle-eyed viewers will have seen that the allocation um, needs in bx the number of logical pages to allocate so let's do that and let's quickly check um, if we forgot anything else so the number of free pages doesn't take anything number of pages number of free pages frame segment doesn't take anything so it's only ems alloc that we forgot that requires the number of pages that you want to have in bx the mapping we did correctly and uh, the freeing as well and there's um, one more function that is of interest uh, because there are more functions that you could use um, querying certain things i'm not sure now this is even uh, an older version as you can see there is uh, sometimes there's no version number up here in, in the function but for example if we uh, say get page frame base address this is only available in drivers supporting EMS 3.0 or higher usually you will see version 3.2 but there are newer versions that are um, version 4 and I'm thinking about which Ah, for example, this here, get expanded memory hardware information. This is actually um, 4.0 or higher. We are sticking with 3.2 here. Nothing that we're using is, um, I think, in 3.2. Reallocation of pages, for example, is a similar function that is only available in 4 and higher. And in 4, you can, I think, even uh, move around and exchange memory regions exactly. Um, and you can change, you can move around the, um, where do you have it? The EMS window so that it doesn't sit in the place that is given by the driver, but you can move it around. But this is something that we don't want to do here. So um, it's still a nice feature to get the version, uh, which is function 46, as you can see here. And it will return in AL the MM version as a binary coded decimal, which sounds fancier than it 
actually is. The return value is stored as a BCD, a binary coded decimal, which means that you have the two digits of a two digit decimal number, like 10 or 99 or whatever, in the higher and lower nibble, that is four bits of the byte in AL. So what we can do is uh, we can mask out the lower four bits by doing a logical AND with 0xf or 15 decimal. And we add to that the four bits to the right shifted value, which is the higher four bits. And we have to take that and actually multiply that by 10 because that is basically the tens. And then you have a regular number stored in one byte instead of the binary coded decimal. The binary coded decimals were used quite often in the early days of computing, but are more or less obsolete, I would say. Next up are um, two functions, init-ems and clear-ems. Um, maybe the clear-ems is actually simpler, so I'm going to do that first. Um, actually, we're going to call free-ems on our um, on our emm handle, because we only have one allocation, and if you have more allocations, you would free them all and compare that and for suppressing the warnings we will do in cast to int here and otherwise if that doesn't work we are just gonna print out the error code right away because this will be something more or less fatal because we can't free the memory um then we have that okay uh init ems we need to do a bunch of things, or we can do a bunch of things. I'm gonna put in some stuff here that is not strictly necessary, but that's interesting to see. So we're gonna have um, some variables for the number of pages that are in the system, the free pages, and the version of the EMM driver. Uh, then we're first gonna call the EMS installed function. And if that isn't even available, we will do an error message, something like no EMS driver installed or detected. Just like that, and we'll exit with an error code. And else we will print EMS driver detected. just like that and we'll continue our work. We will read out the EMF driver version, EMM ver equals EMS version. That is a function that we already coded. And we will see that this is, um, if this is equal to the error code, minus one, then we will print the error message that the driver gave us and return. Or else we're gonna print the version number. ms version percent d dot percent d. And now we can use this binary coded decimal that we converted to regular format. And we can get the first version part by dividing by 10 and the second version part by doing modulo 10, which gives us the tens and the ones basically. And this will give us a very nice version number indeed. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Then we can query the number of pages available. something like that. And if num pages 
is not equal to the MS error code, then we can print that actually out. Percent D MS pages in total. Num pages. And else we will print the error code. You see the principle here is always the same. Same goes for free pages. Um, let's just copy this. It is very similar. Can I go here free pages? also check for that percent EMS pages free and we will also write how many bytes that is just to be very clear um, not num pages but free pages we get the number of free pages by multiplying by EMS page size which I defined above as 16384. And that's that. And then we will also allocate the memory that we need. Um, that will be EMS alloc four times number of frames. Uh, so the idea here being um, each of our VGA mode 13 frames is 60, exactly 64,000 bytes. And yeah, four pages are a little bit more, but for simplicity reasons, I said, well, let's take 65, 64 kilobytes exactly of size for each frame. So we have four times n frames, and we'll try to acquire that. In total, it will be slightly more than two megabytes. So you will be able to run this on any machine that has at least two point five megabytes of expand memory. For example, every four megabyte machine should be able to do that properly set up every 386 at least or 286 with a certain driver. DOSBox out of the box will definitely run. It usually has eight megabytes of EMS memory available in the default configuration, I think. So that should be fine. Again, checking for errors here. just the usual printing out the error code which might for example here be that we try to acquire more pages than are available and we also need to have the page segment which we can also get here and let's copy that too And that is our initialization routine, actually. Should be fine. We can still try to build. And there are a couple of errors where I forgot things. There is a semicolon missing. Um, this here is complaining a little bit. Incorrect assignment. Yeah, but actually we want that. Um, we can probably avoid this by doing some kind of uh, let's perhaps cast this to bool does this silence the no this will not silence uh, we we'll probably have to no it definitely wants to have this in its own return code uh, maybe we can do that yeah, let's let's just do that. Um, return not emmec. That should that should silence this warning. Yes, perfect. Um, here's a typo. And here's also a typo. Out of range in comparison, uh, there is another thing. Uh, let's see what we can do about this. We need to do a little cast here. 
And that's okay. Um, the rest are the warnings that are due to not implement it yet. So um, during the load, uh, let's go down here. The loading of the GIFs, we are trying to load the GIF and then we will copy the image data from the current GIF file into EMS memory um, at physical, no logical, logical page number, I guess, or physical page number um, i times four, because we always need four pages. So it will copy to the next four consecutive pages and do the mem copy basically um, of the palette, because we also need one palette per frame. That will not be in the EMS actually. I have created a large array for all the um, palettes here, byte palettes, number of frames times 768. We could put that into EMS as well. That might be an optimization, but it's only a couple of kilobytes. So I didn't bother to do that. So how do we do the copy? Um, rather simple. We need an error code. We need some iteration variable. And then we will do for i equals n, because n is the starting frame that we're copying from, to n plus size divided by EMS page size plus 1. For example, if we have uh, 64,000 bytes, uh, 64,000 bytes divided by 16384 will give us 3.9 or 3 in integer. So we need to add one more. We will do plus plus i and we will also increment the source pointer to be able to do the copying. And we will map a single page, mm handle, comma i, comma zero. We will always take the i page and map it to uh, the uh, page number zero in the window. You could also map all four consecutive pages and do one mem copy. That is a bit up to you. You can do this optimization. It might be slightly faster, but probably hardly measurable. Uh, we have to check for an error. If there is an error, we need to return to text mode, otherwise it will look very weird and then error out of the program. However, if it works, we can do a mem copy by calling the EMS page macro for the frame page zero. And uh, the source is our source pointer, which gets incremented for every four copies by the actual page size. And that's also what we are doing. Actually, the size here is incorrect. This needs to be EMS page size. So that should do the trick, I think. Um, that should be fine. And it's actually maybe a little bit um, too much. Maybe we should rather go by size. Uh, let's 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 do it like so. Um, let's introduce a variable k and k equals size divided by EMS page size plus one. So that we iterate over i from n to n plus k. And we increment by size divided by k because this will give us the actual 16,000 um, bytes. So we can do a much better 
copy here without copying any extra bytes that we don't want to copy because we have a slight disagreement. Um, our whole four frames or whole four pages are 65,536 or 64 kilobytes, but our data is actually only 64,000. So that would be a slight optimization. Um, further optimization would be to map all four pages um, because you have to call EMS map four times anyway and then do a mem copy of the uh, whole size, which might actually be better, right? Um, how would we do that? Maybe we'll do that right away. <laughs> Maybe do, yeah, let's do, let's do that optimization as well. Um, so instead of that, we would go from zero to K basically. And um, the source pointer would not be incremented. Instead, the mem copy would go from EMS page zero over the whole size. So it will write into pages one, two, and three as well. Um, however, we would map I plus N actually, the um, actual physical page I plus N into logic page I. So if we start off at page 10, we would map EMS pages 10, 11, 12, and 13 into pages 0, 1, 2, and 3. And uh, that should actually be the most efficient way because then we only have one mem copy call and four EMS map calls. And K should be four because size divided by EMS page size plus one will be 3.9, round down to three, plus one gives us four. That should do it. Um, does it compile? No, there are a couple of errors. Um, expression syntax, oh, because I mistyped. There's one more error. Um, free EMS is not defined, um, which is a shame. And that is due to the fact uh, that uh, we either forgot it or it's <laughs> called not free EMS, but EMS free, obviously. So let's do that. That's better. There are still a bunch of warnings, but those are from the unimplemented copy from EMS. This is during the rendering loop. Uh, we will copy the same stuff back. And the nice thing here is, it is actually um, the very same function, only with the source and destination pointer reversed. So just like that, we are done. So let's have a quick, very quick look on the MS page macro, because that looks a bit weird, but it's actually rather simple. It selects the, um, nth page where n can be between 0 and 3 in the EMS window and it will take the EMS frame segment that we acquired and um, yeah. we should actually don't make we shouldn't make the call here we should use the EM um, page seg because that's much faster. We don't have to call this all the time. So this is another optimization. This will save us quite a bit of time not querying the EMS driver. Um, and we'll make a far pointer with the EMM page segment plus um, the nth page basically shifted to the left by 10 because that's uh, how far the Segment uh, segments are usually uh, shifted in the world, and the offset will be zero. And this will create us a far pointer that we have to cast to avoid to avoid pointer to be able to use it for anything. And that should actually do the trick, hopefully. Okay. Um, now comes the question: Will it run? Um, first, let's quickly check our main function before we do that. Uh, what we're actually doing. First, we should be seeing that we're clearing the screen. 
init EMS, which will print out a lot of information about the EMS. Then it will um, try to load the images and frames. We can hit any key and it will abort after loading the next GIF file. The GIF file name will be in the subdirectory GIF, uh, file name IT dash and some number. The load GIF function will actually print a little indicator. I changed that from our previous version. Um, I think that's in the next pixel function. So if you check out the new code, there will be an indicator like a spinner, basically, um, which makes it more visible because the GIF decoder is highly not optimized. So it's very slow and you will see how the progress is during the loading. Yeah, you will see it. If the image loaded correctly, we will copy it to the EMS uh, exactly as we said to the I times fourth page, uh, 64,000 bytes. Then we'll copy the palette and then we will free the image because we need to make space for the next one. And this will continue in a loop. Then we'll go to graphics mode and wait for seven frames so that we get 10 frames per second for a 70 hertz refresh rate on the VGA. Copy from EMS uh, the current frame to the VGA buffer and also set the palette. This will lead to, depending on how fast the copy can progress, uh, this will lead to a little bit of artifacting in the palettes because the palettes will differ slightly between the GIF images. We can only avoid this by going to mode X or mode Y and doing the palette setting in the vertical retrace. Um, you can do this as a homework basically, but you will have to adjust the way that the images are put into memory by reshuffling the pixels so that uh, you have it in the mode X format. I didn't do that here, but you can try and do that for optimization purposes. So let's try to see if it works. Um, there's an issue. No EMS driver detected, so we have some error. So let's see what that error is. Actually, very simple. Um, there was only three axes, but it needs to be four axes. I think that should work. Yeah, it does. It says EMS driver detected, EMS version 4.0. 1024 EMS pages in total, and if you forgot the backslash N, and 944 EMS pages free, which equates to 15.4 megabytes roughly. And you can see it um, slowly loads using this nice indicator that you see that it's actually doing something. And we'll just wait, it will go to 35 to display the animation. Fast forward. And there you go. <laughs> we can now play a, an animation basically on any PC that has at least two point something megabytes of EMS or a DOS box that emulates that without having to decode the data on the fly. We can pre-cache this. This is of course a not very useful example of this technology. Probably you would rather use this for um, very large level sets or to swap in new graphics data for the current view of your game engine and uh, maybe also for uh, swapping in samples or music that are currently being used. Um, the nice thing here is that it runs on any PC that has either an, a fitting card an EMS card with a appropriate driver or on 286s you can have emulators that use the extended memory to emulate EMS or some some chipsets already support that and on 386s EMM386 is the default to do that no need to switch to protected mode which has different advantages obviously but is also um, a little bit more difficult perhaps to code for and especially it only runs on 386s and upwards, whereas this would run on any old PC. Probably not with this performance because the CPU would have a hard time pushing the 64 kilobytes at 10 frames per second. Probably not possible, but um, you can imagine to use it anyway for large data sets and levels, etc. So yeah, um, we can press escape here. To quickly recap, uh, EMS has a so-called page window, usually at around D000 hex. 
in the um, conventional memory. It runs on any PC from the 8088 onwards and uh, uses a kind of bank switching and you can detect the driver by looking up the string emm for access and a zero in the interrupt vector for um, interrupt 67 hex you can query the number of pages and free pages and there's uh, also stuff for allocation mapping and freeing um, and it always works in the same way by selecting the api function in the AH register calling the interrupt and maybe passing around some parameters in the other general purpose registers which you can look up in the specification basically. And other than that it's very simple to map different uh, pages from the EMS space into our conventional space and do regular mem copies. You can of course also skip the mem copy if you don't need that. If you just need to look up stuff, you can directly use that. Um, and yeah, it's actually a very simple mode of enhancing your DOS programs with much more memory that you can probably ever use. But it's very useful for games, for even for applications back in the day to store large amounts of data in a faster way than you could by using, for example, the hard disk or the floppy, which were also very limited and expensive. So that's it for today. I think um, we can stop here. I'm going to run the program again and um, share, like, subscribe, the usual stuff. Everything else is in the video description linked to the source code so you can um, play with this program at home. Uh, if you want to support me, there's also links to do that. And other than that, I want to say uh, see you in the next video and bye bye.